Hi, today I want to shine some light on one of the most pressing problems as people grow older, Alzheimer's disease, and how the application of AI in neural networks has the possibility to revolutionize how we can diagnose it accurately. But first, a little bit about me. Hi, I'm Alan and I'm a rising junior at Bellarmine College Preparatory in San Jose, California. And I love exploring biomedical science and neuroscience because it allows me to unravel the mysteries of the brain, which to me is the most complex and fascinating organ inside our human body. Right now, I'm part of a neuroscience research internship at Stanford. In our school, I'm heavily involved in club activities. In fact, I founded UNICEF Club, which helps fundraise for endangered children worldwide. I co-founded Science Olympiad Club, and also I'm a part of Neuroscience and Machine Learning Club. I also love to do speech and debates, and I've played ice hockey for over 12 years now, and I love volunteering at my free time at my local rink, teaching special needs kids how to play ice hockey and skate. I also love pursuing my passion for art and graphic design. Now onto today's main topic for discussion. Alzheimer's disease is an intensifying, incurable neurodegenerative disease that eventually takes away people's mental and physical functions. It's caused by abnormal clumps of amyloid beta proteins and tangles of tau proteins in the brain, which usually start off in the hippocampus region but spread out through later stages. And that leads to synaptic connection loss and neuron death, leading to symptoms like memory or thinking loss. Today, over 7 million Americans are diagnosed with AD, and that number is projected to grow to 13 million by 2050 and over 150 million globally. So how do doctors even diagnose this? Well, they use a combination of different methods. They look at the patient's medical history, take neurological exams, or even cognitive and functional assessments and brain imaging tests. But there's a problem, because neurological tests or neuroimaging tests can cost up to $5,000, and that only averages up to an accuracy rate of 77%. And it's estimated that one in every five person is misdiagnosed. But not everything is lost though, because we can change that. Machine learning and neural networks, which I'll be talking about today, has immense potential for revolutionizing how we can detect and classify Alzheimer's disease, specifically through neuroimaging. Machine learning is a branch of AI based on data and algorithms, enabling AI to learn the way that we do. And neural network is a type of machine learning with layers of processing that model neurons in the human brain, allowing it to capture complex patterns and relationships in data. That's why it has so much potential in the medical field, because good utilization in diagnosing diseases accurately could save billions of lives. Now onto my model, I used a convolutional neural network, which is a specific type of neural network, which is great at finding complex patterns in images. In fact, it's so good that it's used in self-driving cars. Yeah. And to train my test and model, I used an MRI dataset containing over 6,000 images of MRI brain scans on a patient's brain. Now, I also utilized a 80 to 20 optimal test to train ratio, which means 80% of the images are going to the test portion and 20% to the train portion. So how exactly does my model work? First, the input layer takes in the MRI images to be processed by the network. Second, the images go to the convolution layers, which apply filters to detect details of the image, like edges, textures, and shapes of the brain image. And third, those images are then passed to the pooling layers, which downsamples and reduces the complexity of the images while still retaining the most important details. That's important because it leads to less computational complexity, meaning faster, more informed decision making. And fourth, fully connected layers process data for it to be classified. Each neuron in this layer, which is a basic unit that processes input data, assigns images weights or biases to make a decision. And these biases are really crucial in adjusting the output to improve the accuracy as it's fed more and more images. And finally, the output layer then uses these combined signals to finally classify the MRI scans into four different categories. Very mild demented, mild demented, moderate demented, or non-demented. Now, here's a quick visual sample. 
my CNN is given examples with the correct classification of the image, then uses that information to make predictions on the entire data set, creating complex patterns and connections on, on the, along the way. Here are my graphs showing the results of the CNN for the training data set. So the first graph shows the loss or the model's magnitude of error over epochs, which is one entire passing of training data through the algorithm. And the loss graph decreases over time, which is a good indicator because it shows the model keeps making less and less mistakes. And next, the second graph visualizes the model's accuracy over time, showing that it peaked at around 96% after only 30 epochs. Now, onto the final testing phase. Our model got an ultimate accuracy of 89.67% which is in fact 12% more accurate than the 77 rate I mentioned by a regular clinical diagnosis. In conclusion, Alzheimer's disease is a prevalent neurodegenerative disease in today's world, especially among our older populations. AI and the use of neural networks holds amazing potential in neuroimaging to improve clinical diagnosis. In fact, as shown by my CNN model, it got near 90% accuracy in detecting and classifying AD, meaning it is around 12% more accurate than a clinical diagnosis. But there still is an error rate of 10%. That 12% might make the difference between life or death for millions, if not billions to come. And my model is simply the first step towards the right direction. Through incremental improvements such as more layers of processing or utilizing a larger data set, models have the potential to reach near perfect accuracy. In the near future, I hope that we can see these models in action in the clinical setting, revolutionizing diagnosis and ethically ensuring all patients get the best treatment that they deserve. So to bring things to an end, what can you do to make an impact in our community? It starts by first, researching on AI expansion into neuroscience and healthcare. Second, supporting and advocating for policies that aim to expand AI research and application, and third, and most importantly, having insightful discussions with peers or family, because anything counts. Now, I'd like to take the time to acknowledge my family, Dr. Ansgar first and Dr. Yuzang at Stanford, the Global Health Leaders Conference, and finally, you for listening. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me via email. I'll be more than happy to respond. Thank you. Mm.